yo. Still bills, what's the deal, man? Y'all know how the story go, man. I just dropped my daughter off at the daycare, and I got to rush to the plantation, man, to get my truck up out the way, man. But peep game, man, we got to, we got to rap about something, man. Um, We got to rap about... God damn, dog. It's really getting, like, repetitive speaking on this shit, man. And I don't think it's a coincidence that two fighters that they are proclaiming being ducked by Cinnamon have backed out of the fights that they were scheduled to be having about a week or two out from the actual fight day. I don't think that's a coincidence, man. I honestly don't. I feel like... um. How exactly do both of y'all, y'all just so happen to get injured during the training camp or whatever the case may be and back out of the fight two a week or two before the fight was supposed to go down, man. I saw the, the ticket sales for the Charlo fight against Sulecki and they were piss poor. They were piss poor. And... Like, how do you, you know, how, you know, how would you, how could you, how could you sell the dude that you're trying to, you're trying to sell this dude as, you know, he's one of the front runners of the PBC. He's being deemed as one of the boogeymen of the division that's being avoided. How do you sell that by broadcasting that shit on national syndicated television? How, I don't even think they have enough curtains and blockers to block all the seating that was available. Left available. You know what I'm saying? How would they go about doing that? You dig what I'm saying? <sighs> God damn it, man. These two dudes are, I don't know, they think because of where they once were in the rankings of stature, that they still, that still resonates with them today. Like, because they were once upon a time a Canelo Alvarez mandatory then. Oh, well, I was a mandatory, you know what I'm saying? Not is, but I was a mandatory. I was a mandatory of his, but he ducked me. I was, 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 shoulda, coulda, woulda. And it's like, all right, cool, that may be, that may be the case. I, I won't argue against that. I won't argue against that at all, but in the now, you're not. So what are you doing to force this dude's hand? This is the problem with a lot of these new coming, you know, these new age boxing fans, man. These, you know, these new jacks, these new jack boxing fans. They are, they, you know, they're comfortable and complacent with living in the fantasy world. What somebody would do to a potential opponent. Demetrius Andre would box circles around Canelo Alvarez, and he was a mandatory once upon a time. So those two, um, with those two. With those, those two elements in the air That's why Canelo Alvarez is done And they're complacent on that You know they're cool with saying in that fantasy realm And it's like Nigga no you dig Cause when you, when you push that narrative Like believe what you want to believe man But these these boxers listening to You know they listen to pugnets And they listen to you They listen to folks If you, get, if you have a big enough algorithm on YouTube They're gonna click on your channel eventually they're gonna click on your channel eventually. So they're hearing the shit. They're hearing the sentiment, and for the propaganda pushers, they're really listening to them because that soothes them. So when they're being sued, and a lot of the propaganda pushers, they have legitimate. They have interviews with champions. They have, you know, they're one of the more favored channels to click on because it paints a narrative. The truth is ugly. Nobody wants to hear the truth. And there is truth in what the propaganda say, but it's so convoluted with just thoughts of delusion and grandeur. It's like, come on, man. So, because Andre doesn't, you know, he feels he's, behold, he's beholden to that mandatory statue with the Canelo Alvarez, he doesn't have to work and fight the caliber competition that's being asked of him because... He feels he's already arrived, which is not like you. I don't think he's a two division world champion. Yeah. He's a two division world champion and he's a talent. We see the talent with him. 
but he's never beat a world. He has never dethroned a world, a sitting world champion, dog. Like we have to, we we have to acknowledge this shit. Demetrius Andre, I think him and Zach Parker, I think that possibly would have been the best win had he beat Zach Parker. I think he would have beat him. But had he would have beat Zach Parker, I think that's the best win on his resume. Given what he had to do in order to obtain that, he would have had to fight a mandatory, but not a mandatory, but a contender. And then fight David Benavidez. And then the winner of that gets the shot at Canelo. I think that would have been a beautiful fucking path for that man to walk on, man. But for some reason, he feels he doesn't have to go through them proper channels and he'll just opt out of a fight. Like, this is the second time he's done this, man. Like, when you put into, when you push it into the universe, you put, you get what you get, uh, you, uh, you get what you put into the universe. I'm not a follow, I don't subscribe to any sort of religious doctrine, but you reap what you sow. Definitely reap what you sow. You didn't want to fight Laura because you thought he was born. Just now, all right, cool, you're a mandatory for Canelo Alvarez, and then Canelo gets you with the same mind and reasoning that you hit Laura with as to why you don't want to fight him. You dig? Like, come on, man. Like, what are we doing? Backed out of a Jamil Charlo fight. All right, cool. Whatever the reason why, you did it. But then you turn around and fucking Billy Joe Saunders popped up and has to back out of the fight with you. You get what you put into the universe, bro. Beating down the doors of a Golovkin and a Jamal Charlo fight. Yes, that's that's I get it. Those were damn good fights that we were looking forward to. If they would have got made. But you can't ignore your history. You can't ignore your history, man. You you know, it repeats itself. And now you're doing this shit with Zach Parker and allegedly you have yet to provide a medical report back in the fucking claims of you having a shoulder injury or whatever. A week or two out from the fight, you back out. But then you've been interviews talking about, yeah, you lost, but never lost it before. But, you know, before, like, I fought, I fight tougher challenges than before. What Joe Smith type, Joe Smith Jr. type fight do you have on your resume? Or a, a, a John Pascal? Or a Sullivan Barrera? What, what type caliber opponents do you have on your resume that equate to those dudes? That is delusion, my guy. That is delusion. How do you do that, bro? Like, you dig what I'm saying? Like, y'all, y'all want, y'all, y'all want. I, y'all are some of the y'all want the most for doing the least. Y'all refuse to fight the type of quality opposition that will better prepare you for a fight with a Canelo Alvarez. Not just to get the fight in the payday, but actually give you a legitimate shot at winning that fight. Y'all don't want to go through that shit because y'all want to preserve y'all owe for him. So if y'all lose, hey, well, at least I got paid for it. As opposed to letting the talent speak for itself. You, it's a... It's, Going through a gauntlet is, that, even if you lose you and you make that shit competitive, bro, at the rate that y'all niggas is going, y'all are going to get brutally stopped. It's not going to be a competitive match to where somebody can argue, oh, well, it was a controversial decision like that was with Golovkin and Laura. It's not going to be like that. Y'all niggas is going to get outlined in chalk. Jamal Charlo, dog, like you a week out from the fucking fight with Sulecki, which I'm honestly, I'm not mad, I'm not too mad at that, because I don't think you should be fighting Sulecki to begin with, because you weren't too apt to fight the niggas that he's already lost to, so now you got this nigga, alright, cool, let's, let's just get the fight over with and see, at least keep your tools sharp, you be a, you've been out of the ring a year, dog, A year.
And I'm not gonna allow y'all to fucking talk this bullshit that, oh, well, Jaime Munguia, he fucked that fight up, and because Jaime Munguia fucked the bag up, then he just gotta settle for whoever. No. No. Because I ain't heard shit about Carlos Adamez. And he's a mandatory to your fucking belt as well. Why are you not why are you not entertaining that? Y'all have a common opponent in Sergey Kovalev. Not Sergey Kovalev, but Sergey uh Derevyuchenko. Why are you not trying to fight Eris Landy Lara? Why? I'm seeing people argue, oh man, oh Laura, he old as shit. Age and attrition are not this, they're not compatible because you can be George Foreman is the oldest or heavyweight champion and the oldest, oldest champion in boxing I'm like, nah, 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 not me I was. but he obtained the heavyweight strap at 45 years old after a 10 year layoff just because you're at an accelerated age that doesn't mean attrition kicks in with you LeBron, Jack, most NBA players are retired in their, in their mid-30s and if they not retired, they're reduced to playing, being, you know, coming off the bench or something. LeBron James is playing at an MVP caliber level, dog. Tom Brady. He's like 40 when he retired. We have to take that shit into consideration. You have to. You have to. Age. <clears throat> All old heads are not created equal. Golovkin is a unified world champion at 40 years old, and he just knocked out a dude who had never even been dropped before, if I'm not mistaken. So don't give me that bullshit about Laura being too old. He was 37, and he hasn't taken no type of hellacious punishment like that. He hasn't done it. He hasn't been through the grinder like that. He hasn't. So there's no excuse for you to go in there and fight him. Or for you not to go in there and fight him. Y'all want to talk about a Spike O'Sullivan? All right, yeah, cool. He, he crashed that man. He crashed him. He, he did. It made it look easy. But how was Suleki any worse than a Spike O'Sullivan? From a dude who's five and six years younger than Iris Landy Lara. Both of y'all have y'all refused to fight Laura, and Laura is a common opponent to a Canelo Alvarez. So at the very least, you can gauge where you would be at if you were able to, based on how you deal with the skill set that Eris Landy Laura has. But y'all don't want to do that because y'all fit. Even if Charlo in his reach, oh man, feed me the winner. Of Golovkin and Canelo Feed me the winner It's like bro How like, Canelo his, sec his second fight of the year Was announced shortly after He lost to Bavar Shortly after his loss His second fight is announced Y'all both Have found a way to finagle yourselves Out of a fight with your potential With your, uh, with your next opponents so he would have fought twice in one year when y'all haven't even fought once. He is doubling y'all work rate. And it's against quality opposition champions. Not no Sue Leckies, not no Zach Parkers. Champions. Y'all can say whatever the fuck y'all want to say about Golovkin. He's a champion. He lost to Bavar. That's a champion. Y'all think y'all are just y'all entitled to this fight with like bro? What are y'all doing? I want to see y'all fight him. I honestly do. But what are y'all doing to better prepare yourself and strengthen the chances of you actually winning that fight or even making it competitive? Y'all are killing yourselves with inactivity, man. Y'all keep the, the least y'all can do is all right, cool, man. Let me get a let me let me let me let me stay sharp. They just gave Andre to October to honor that mandatory in Johnny Beck. So we don't even know if he's moving up or not. He's in limbo right now. And now that the Zach Parker fight is off, who are you going to fight if you decide to move up? 
Y'all are playing yourselves. Y'all are really playing yourselves. Y'all really think y'all, like, let's say Canelo does this. All right, yeah, let me get them. That's probably going to be the easiest fight of his career. Like, come on, man. This shit got to stop. It has to stop. It has to stop. Y'all cannot sit here and definitively tell me that y'all are deserving of a fight at this point in time. Y'all keep finding a way to, you know, wiggle out of the fight. Out of the fights that y'all have. To, it, all right, cool. Everybody know Shuleki is a stay busy fight. We mad about it, but it is what it is. There's nothing we can do about it at this point. Just get the shit over with so we can move on. Y'all don't even do that. Man, listen. I, I just, I, I don't know, man. Y'all need to give away from whatever handlers that y'all have because it is really, it's getting to a point where it's, it's like, yo, yo, for real, bro, like, bro, bro, this shit can't be tolerated now. It cannot be tolerated. But instead of your fans holding y'all accountable for that action, y'all, they, they're, Y'all are comfortable with them staying in this safe space to where they can make these arguments in favor of y'all. And they won't become your detractors or hold y'all responsible. That is going to, that's really going to have a detrimental effect to y'all once y'all get the fight that y'all have been asking for. When y'all get that, it's going to be maximum ugly. Y'all need to get away from whoever it is that's managing y'all and be smarter with your careers. Because at this moment, man. 